after that, I, well, I thought I hung up my knocking shoes twice in my career. After my third summer selling books, I thought I was done. And after my fourth summer selling books, I, I, I swore I was done. And then a year and a half later, after I moved down to Arizona, I stumbled back into door to door. The, the startup companies that I had been a part of um, a couple of times as an employee and once as a very young, naive founder, like I don't even really, I guess that's when we started our first business, but we, we barely brought in a paycheck. I, I stumbled back into door to door through home security. So one of my friends said, Hey, I'm knocking on doors again and make a good money. You got to come check it out. And I, and I went and followed a sales manager and what I saw him do in an hour. I'm like, Oh, you just made 600 bucks. I'm, I'm no, I'm better than you. Like based on what I've seen, I'm better than you, which I, that may not been true. My ego was nice and loud, but I did have a really successful summer. So I, I joined that company and made over a hundred thousand dollars in the next three and a half months. And that was, that's what launched my career in home security where I stayed for 11 years. So um, residential home security, I sold it. I built teams, trained teams, worked with uh, probably close to six, 700 people um, at the biggest my organization was, was a little over 150 and saw that, you know, worked my ass off to build and sustain momentum. Um, learned a lot of lessons in leadership, learned a lot of lessons in management, did a lot of things right, did a lot of things wrong. And in 2016, so it would have been 16, 17, or 17, 18, 19, and 20. Maybe I'm getting that wrong. 18, 19, and 20. So we had five years of growth, stead, steady growth. Um, and then we had three years of decline at the end. And there are two things that were happening. Uh, one is I, I believe the organization I was with, I was the only leader, sales leader in that company that was really committed to growing and doing the work required to grow. The other, there were a lot of other guys that were kind of coasting. They'd been in the business a, a decade. They'd made a lot of money. They weren't trying to go and, and build the entire thing anymore. And so you know, we lost some momentum in the organization. And then ultimately, home security has become a much more commoditized industry in the last couple of years yeah. um, with Blink and Arlo cameras and Amazon and Apple's in the game and Samsung's in the game. I mean, it is very easy to set up your own alarm system today. That wasn't the truth 10 years ago. Yeah. And and that is, um, it's actually one of the big moments that Pat, Patrick, Pat David, who you mentioned and how we met. Patrick, I was doing a mastermind with him. So a, a, like a you know, 40 or 50 people jumped onto a call every month. And what year? I was, this was 18. It would have been, um, it would have been, it would have been 2020. 20 before COVID. Yeah. yeah. Right. As COVID, right. As COVID was rocking. So we were, you know, we thought COVID was going to be the death of door to door. And in some States it was, it was it very was. in some States. Yeah. Northeast, especially I'm done. California, so parts, maybe parts of California, parts of California, generally speaking, the rest of America, it was gangbusters for door to door because humans were so devoid of human contact that if it wasn't the, you know, if they were afraid of you, they wouldn't answer the door. And if they were, and if they saw it was a human being to interact with, they would answer the door. And it was like this jolly celebration of, of, of life and connection and community and door to door. Uh, crushed the summer of like it was incredible results in every industry that I know of um, that that knocked on doors in 2020. During 2020, though, our, our business model was being challenged. Right, Amazon, like these these big companies, tech companies, were made a very big play into into the home security space and smart homes specifically. All these smart plugins and things that used to be very novel. And I was talking to Pat on this you know five six minute coaching conversation that I'd had with him, and I, I briefly explained. The industry is in trouble. There are a few parachutes, things that we could do, you know, solar, other products that we could look into. I have done my best to bring these to the CEO and the president of the company. Like I've, I've tried to make a case that something needs to change dramatically. And it doesn't seem like their timeline is nearly as imperative as mine. And, and Pat said in that moment, he's like, if if the writing's on the wall and you're in, and you're voicing this sound of alarm, like assuming you're not wrong, if the leaders in your company aren't going to make that pivot with you, then you have to pivot on your own. And it wasn't specifically to solar. I didn't know that was exactly what I was going to do. Um, but his 
direct feedback. If you've ever gotten it from them too in a mastermind or anything, it was, uh, you know, I just treated it as the truth. And, and so far, every time I've done that, it's worked out pretty well. And, and that's what we did. We, we investigated thoroughly the solar industry to try to quickly understand, you know, what, what was it about solar that a lot of my friends had seen? Was it something that we could pivot into? Was it viable to pivot into it with our current organization or do we need to break off? Did I need to start something fresh? And so although we had 40, 50 people still active in the organization, the original the original move wasn't to simply take everybody and say, hey, we're doing this now. It was, and that might've proven better hindsight 2020. I, But what I did is I, I approached it and said, look, I need to make a decision for myself and my family and my future first. I'll do that along with my brother. Like if we were starting from scratch and we were committed, we could build something. If that's what it takes, we'll do it. And so first we got to the place where we knew what we wanted to do no matter what and knew what we were committed to no matter what. And then we aligned around some principles that we had 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 experienced and done a good job of promoting inside of the culture in the home security space. And we also recognized some of the, the cultural pieces that had slipped in that we didn't want to work with anymore. Just bad habits and, and some bad relational dynamics that we didn't want to introduce into this new company. And so when we invited our team to join, it was really with that conversation it is here, here's who we are. Here's what we stand for. Here's what this is going to be like. And if you want to join, please, please come. And if this is what you're looking for, it's not here. It's not going to be here. And we, we didn't, we didn't have everybody transition over. We had, we had most of them transition short term. As we continue to stick to our guns about these things, we had a bunch of them transition out very quickly. And that was pretty scary to proactively reduce our sales force while we also went out on the limb of launching a company and, and had all of the financial implications and, and considerations about that. But you know, it proved to be one of the most important decisions we made early on. I mean, a very simple concept. Know who you are, know the values of your company, and make every decision with alignment to them, which we have done to the best of our ability for three years now. 